the thumb plates. The volar and dorsal plates are ill-defined. They blend with the capsule, the flexors, and extensors. Let's start out with the volar plate of the interphalangeal joint. That's the easiest one to see. It looks like a fat squiggle. Now this one looks a little bit like a toad. There's the nose of the toad. There are the back legs of the toad. But that is the plate. When you flex the thumb, it becomes even more crinkled and even more mass-like. Some people say it looks like a triangular disc. Let's, let's try looking at it in the short axis projection. A little hard to see, but that's it right there, deep to the flexor pollicis longus. Let's see if we can spot it one more time here. There it is again. Uh, it's a difficult structure to identify, but in the sagittal projection, that's your best bet. The dorsal plate is almost impossible to separate out without a microscopy coil from the distal extensor mechanism. Now remember, the extensor mechanism doesn't have a central tendon and lateral slips like the fingers do. So that's a little bit of a variation. Then we come back to the MCP, where a combination of the extensor brevis and the plate form this condensed triangular structure. And the anterior plate's a little hard to see. There's part of the anterior plate right there, this linear structure in front of the sesamoid. Remember, the sesamoid is embedded uh, in the capsule and sometimes in a tendon. So the plate's a little, little more challenging at the MCP. Here's the more proximal aspect of the plate. And it's not uncommon to see a little bit of fluid in the anterior recess of the first MCP lying just deep to the plate and the sesamoid mechanism. The volar and dorsal plates, ill-defined, merging with other structures, perhaps best seen as a triangular-shaped disc at the interphalangeal joint.